Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome to my channel, welcome to today's video. And in today's video, I am going to be doing a what's in my bag. For reference, I'm Laura Ren Taylor and I make business writing and school related videos. I am in college, I am pursuing a degree in creative writing and publishing in case you wanted to know. And that will be relevant for the most part to what's in my bag, though I believe regardless of what major you are, you will make use of all of the products that I will be keeping in my bag as I attend college. Before we get into what type of bag I have and of course what's in it, I wanted to remind you guys to maybe like and subscribe and to follow me on all my socials, which will be linked down below. Now let's get into it. So first I have this shoulder bag that I got from Walmart many years ago. I don't know, I doubt that they still sell it. Unfortunately, if you wanted to get one that looks like it, I'm sure there are other stores you could go to that sell bags that look like this, probably better quality, who knows? Although I will say after all this time, it's still holding strong. I just haven't used it a lot in the past couple of years, given that I normally lug around like a big, like full on backpack but I'm trying to travel a little bit lighter this year. I also feel like because a lot of my classes are in back to back, I am going to be attending one class per day most of the time, that having a bag like this will make more sense. Of course, we'll see as time goes on, it might change. And if you continue to watch my vlogs in the future in various other videos, I'll probably let you guys know if it does end up working out for me. And maybe I'll update you guys in a pinned comment on this video in case you end up watching this uh, next semester or next year and I'll make sure you guys are updated on if this bag actually makes sense. I think we're gonna start with knickknacks but I'll get to the tech in a moment don't worry. So one of the first things that I thought about packing for school is of course my glasses cleaner. I wear glasses and they get smudged all the time I swear even when I don't touch them so these are always nice to have around. I always carry one with me wherever I go. I also have some post-its and a pen. I was thinking when I packed this that, you know, in case I have to write something down quickly and I don't have time to rip out like my iPad or my laptop or anything like that, then this will be a good thing to just have to jot things down and then I can organize my thoughts later, which isn't always the best thought to have, but in a pinch, this will work regardless. And then, I plan on carrying an extra scrunchie because I always end up losing those and a regular hair tie. Sometimes I don't want to put my hair up in a bun or a ponytail. Sometimes I like to braid my hair, so this works a lot better. I can't use this to tie my hair in a ponytail. It will not end well for me. I've literally, I was uh, talking to uh, Brock, my fiance, the other day about this. I cannot use this 95 percent of the time when I try to use this to tie my hair in a ponytail, I end up having to cut it out of my hair because, you know, it's a little frizzy, little, little much sometimes. So this to tie my hair in a ponytail, this to braid it, should I choose to do so, it gives me variety. And sometimes a braid's a little bit quicker for me. It really just depends on the day. I also bring hand sanitizer with me wherever I go. I don't carry a mask with me now because where I live anyway, mask mandates are long gone, uh, most people are vaccinated. And as of right now, when I'm filming this, the virus is not circulating. There are no new variants, but regardless, I still like to at least carry hand sanitizer because, you know, I feel like it's a good idea just to be on the safe side. And then of course, every woman, person with a uterus will have this in their bag. Of course, I'm gonna have feminine products in my bag. I hate calling them that. I feel, it's not like it gives me the ick, like not the word feminine, but like, like whenever someone calls it like feminine hygiene products, I'm like, just call it, a, just call it what it is. It's a pad, tampons. We know what they're for. I never leave the house without those, especially when I know it's going to be that time of the month. I like to be prepared because none of us like to be caught without those. Another thing that I plan on taking to school with me, I'm not going to keep this in the bag because I'll need it before school starts, but I do plan on taking whatever book I'm currently reading with me to school, obviously. Right now, I'm currently reading The Hawthorne Legacy. I'm pretty sure I'll finish this anyway before school starts, but this is just a stand-in for whatever book I'm reading at the time. 
I won't always bring a book to school with me because I do have an iPad mini. I just finished filming a video where I unbox this and show you guys what the layout looks like and how it organized everything. So go watch that if you haven't yet. If you watch the latter half of that video, you'll see I'm wearing the same outfit because I filmed the rest of the video on the same day that I'm filming this. But anyway, this is what I'm gonna be using to take notes for the most part, but I also have the Kindle app on here and I'll read books on here as well. But sometimes I don't like to get the ebook. Is sometimes like uh, for the sake of like saving money, I'm not gonna get the ebook for every single book that I have like the Hawthorne Legacy, for example. And I know I am doing better with reading that book physically. So getting an ebook for it won't always make sense. It really just depends on the book. So with that being said, sometimes I'll use this to read my books. I also have a e-reader that I'll use at home and when I'm traveling elsewhere. But when I'm commuting to school, I'm not gonna wanna bring an extra tablet-like thing with me. So using this for reading and writing while I'm at school will be really nice and then like I said occasionally I'll bring a physical book with me as well so that's the tech part of it and then of course we have my laptop case in the front little pocket here I have my airpods which have not been charged but of course I'll charge them before school and I also have a charger for my iPhone and my iPad just in case because I forget to do that sometimes. I do my best to charge all my devices the night before I have to go to school, even though like with my laptop, which I'll show you in a sec, I've had that for two years now and the battery is still pretty good. So I don't have to charge it that much. And the iPad mini that I got is brand new. So I may not have to worry about charging them as much. And same goes for my phone, but just to be on the safe side, bring those with me. I will also have an extra laptop charger in here as well but currently i have one over at my desk so i will pack that when the time comes now to show you this is my laptop i have the macbook air 2020 with the m1 chip i got it from the refurbished section that word refurbished i feel like people don't talk about the apple certified refurbished section you can get almost brand new products for a lot cheaper than getting them brand new but the thing is is with certified refurbished products from apple from the website mind you they replace them with genuine apple parts and when you get them they're in brand new packaging it's as if they had never been touched by another person. So technically this laptop was owned by another person, but I'd imagine for whatever reason they returned it or maybe whatever, the battery wasn't working, whatever, I don't know, but they replaced whatever they had to replace and it was pretty much brand new when I got it. So definitely check out Apple Certified Refurbished if you're in the market for new tech and maybe the Apple student discount still isn't enough for you definitely go check this out. You can even get the iPad Pro that I have, which is also the 2020 version, the fourth generation, for less than a thousand bucks Canadian now. And if you don't wanna buy a brand new iPad Pro, then that is definitely a way to go, I would suggest. But obviously when it comes to tech, you gotta get what you believe will be best for you. And if you do want a newer version with a faster processing chip, that is your prerogative, of course. So that is pretty much everything that I'm going to be taking to school with me. I want to find a better way to transport my Apple Pencil because it just attaches to the side like this. And with my other iPad, there's like a case, like a thing inside the case for you to put it when it's not charging. And then it's like a folio thing. So it folds over and it doesn't fall out constantly. But this, I just put it back in the bag now and it fell off and I don't like the idea of it just like rolling around in there. Maybe I'll just put it in the front pocket of my laptop case when I'm not using it. I think that might be a safer bet. But just to recap, everything that I carry in my bag includes hand sanitizer, pads, tampons, my AirPods, hair elastics, bobby pins, sticky notes, a pen, a cloth to clean my glasses with. Of course, we got my iPad mini, my laptop, and that is pretty much everything. Also a physical book if I decide to bring that with me that day. And that is pretty much everything that I take to school with me. I did want to briefly talk about schooling and what I go to school for, just in case I get questions about that down the line. And I can point people back to this video 
in case you wanted to know or wanted elaboration on what I major in, like I said at the beginning of the video, I am a creative writing and publishing major. I feel like that's relatively self-explanatory, but in case you don't know what that entails, a lot of my degree is honing in on the craft of writing, uh, copy editing, so I am also learning how to better hone my skills when it comes to editing manuscripts and various other types of text. I also had a class in my second semester that was mainly just about like script writing and writing uh, scripts for games and writing uh, a game out and that was a lot of fun. It's equivalent to an English degree though it's not quite the same. When people ask me what my major is and I don't want to go in depth into like what that is because let's be honest when you tell people you're in some sort of artsy degree there are people out there who kind of give you the look and when I don't want to explain or elaborate on what I do, I just say I'm an English major. Don't get me wrong, this still gives me looks, but it's a little bit different than when you say you're a creative writing major, I just get a much different reaction. Also, when you tell people you are a creative writing major, they often ask out of curiosity, and there's no harm in that, they often ask, oh, does that mean you're a writer? Obviously, for me, the answer is yes. And they'll often want to know what you're writing and you have to tell them in my case, oh, I like to write uh, fantasy. And then they want to know what you're writing, like with the fantasy stuff, it's the whole thing. And I am very bashful and shy when it comes to talking about my work. Obviously, when it comes to filming for YouTube, it's a little bit different. I'm not actually talking to a person when I'm filming these videos. I'm talking to a camera and that is much different than talking to, in my case, a hundred people about what I'm writing in one room. That would be absolutely terrifying. And that's why I also tell myself when like, you know, I think, oh, I don't have a lot of subscribers and technically I don't, but also if there were 100 people, 120 people in this room and I had to tell them about, you know, what I'm writing or show them in the case of this video, what's in my bag and be like, hi, I carry tampons in my purse. Like, yeah, no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> so to get a little bit back on track, like I get a little bit like when I tell people that I am a creative writing major. Uh, it's definitely something to think about, like if you plan on going into this degree, what that means for you, what your intentions are. But I also don't want people to think, if they are thinking about going into a degree like this or any artsy related degree, that it's not worth it to try just because people are telling you it may not be worth it or you might have a harder time getting into the industry, at least in the case of my degree. At least when it comes to my degree, there is a business side that we are learning about the publishing industry. So I will be able to hopefully get a job as somebody working in the publishing industry in whatever capacity as a literary agent, an editor, anything like that, or as a writer myself. And I'm using the tools that I'm learning to also help me grow my business and my writing skills. It all kind of culminates and overlaps very much. And that's why I'm also excited to start school again, because then I feel like as I learn and I grow, I can help you guys do the same with your reading habits, with your writing habits, etc. And that's more or less my degree and how it affects me. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be starting your own publishing business to be able to get anything out of this. Even if you're just a writer or just an editor, like you like editing books, uh, this type of degree I think will work for you regardless because in either case you will know what to look for when looking over a manuscript, whether it's your own or somebody else's. And you also will meet people who are interested in the same things as you. And that was probably one of my favorite parts or definitely is my favorite part about having started this degree is meeting people that like the same things I like or have similar tastes in, you know, books, music, whatever. I've managed to meet some really great people in that regard and I'm really happy about that. And if that's something you are craving, then joining or getting into a degree like this or any degree, whatever fits your interests basically is what I'm saying. Go do that. Don't waste your time trying to do something that other people will expect of you because I did that. I tried nursing uh, and that's it didn't work out because as much as I want to help people that just wasn't the right time for me to attempt 
something like that. So hopefully you found this video entertaining. Hopefully I maybe convinced you to make a big life decision. Uh, maybe if you're debating on getting into this type of field or not, just do it. Don't think too hard about it. All right, everybody. That is going to be the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like, subscribe, and do whatever the hell you want in life. Once again, I'm Laura Van Taylor. I make writing, business, and school-related videos. So subscribe, again, if you are into that sort of thing. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!